Welcome back to another episode of Skyland Realm, September 2024. Now the meta has changed, however, we're going to be going over all that and what I think is the best strategies going into the final evening or final day, depending where you're at, of Skyland Realm. The goal is to get top 10, top 15, get those high rewards. Obviously, one of my goals is to get top three. It's pretty much a gamble. It all depends on who built what. And there is no perfect strategy. It all comes down to what strategy you use versus what the enemy uses. And just hopefully yours counters theirs and theirs doesn't counter yours. That's literally what it comes down to, okay? So with that being said, thumbs up, subscribe, and of course, become elite. Yes, join the elite empire. Click the first link in the description for details. And here we go on the free to play accounts. Yo, straight about to shred, baby. And I did get a little bit lucky when it came to round one. I ended up pulling good old Porcelina, as you can see. And now it is time, <laughs> time to shred. But first we gotta sell all of these. And you guys already know my easiest strategy is sell everything but one hero usually that hero is avilia or merciful tree spirit one of the two move forward and then hopefully you can pull sophia or porcelina so you can just easily cruise cruise through this but yes this is pre-recorded as you can see and one of my main strategies is obviously porcelina if you can pull her early you're good to go and you really don't need that many good artifacts especially when you start pushing around four round five if you just have a good artifact on her and maybe one good defensive artifact you can just fly through this like porcelain it is so op obviously she is the meta but that being said now while we watch this i do want to talk about a few strategies the main strategy obviously is going to be porcelina when it comes to high offense or high defense what i find working the best is porcelina with a medium offense and medium defense so you'd probably go with two offensive heroes such as porcelina or natalie or something like that and then to increasing to a higher offense you can slap in sophia however having three offensive big heroes like that if the enemy has a whole bunch of shields i'm talking a whole bunch of guardians you know wilderness the flag it's going to be kind of hard for your three heroes to penetrate because their enemy Sophia is just going to wipe you and it's going to be round one you're going to have three heroes left in the back row with you know no defense up front and like I said it just comes down to what strategy you use the second strategy what I find the best or not the best but one of the best top, top two strategies is Porcelina, Natalie, with a mix of Souls, Wilderness, Valk. And then the sixth one is going to be an upfront hero, usually a huge tank. Still trying to figure out what that take will be. It could be Ruth Cave, it could be Fagan, it could be Dream. Um, I know the Elite Realm is still looking into, you know, what is the best one to choose and you know it depends what artifacts you have the dragon scale the book as you can see it, it, it literally comes down to even void oscillate whatever her, their name is absolutely amazing if you have the correct strategy so when you are going through skyland realm don't focus on just one strategy make sure you get the six seven seven hundred and fifty coins first and then as you're pulling heroes that's when you're going to want to start focusing on what strategy you could choose based on what heroes you get i know last night i was talking to a few of y'all about skyland realm and we have one specific strategy we want to try out that could counter porcelina but we spent maybe an hour trying to build that team and i came so close i literally just was one artifact off which was the book and i and obviously my team got shredded because the book is just so op the cursed book and i couldn't pull it and I couldn't pull Porcelain as well. Those were the top two I couldn't pull. I had everything in line. All I needed was the book and Porcelain. And I just couldn't pull it, you know. It happens. So when it comes down to it, that final day, that final 24 hours, I highly recommend, you know, getting to the top 10, top 15 first. And then when there's like maybe two hours left, then I would replay again and try to get as many battles left 
as I can. As in, you know, you get 10 battles and stuff. Try to build that perfect team, and then when the final hour starts, nobody can, you know, do Skylar Realm except for the people in the the ranking side. And then, you know, try to get top 10 in the last 10 minutes, and then you should have, what, eight, seven games left. And then try to push that, you know, first place, second place, third place. I think the best strategy is to push second or third place in the last 30 seconds, and then when there's five seconds left, then you're going to want to try to push first place, try to get that first game dub. And like I said, it really it, it's not even about skill. It's just about luck. You know, who's going to be in that number one spot with the last five seconds? Does your team counter their team, or is it, or is it reversed? It, that's what makes Skyline Realm kind of lucky. Like, getting first place, second place, third place is awesome, but you really can't, you know, sit there and break, oh, yeah, first place, you know? Like, I don't even break when I get first place. I've gotten first place twice in the last since it's been released, which isn't impressive, but, you know, it is what it is. But, um, yeah, I wish the structure was different to where everyone had a chance to battle, and then, in, like, in the last 10 minutes, if you lost, let's say, two battles in a row, then you automatically freeze, and then it has, like, a freezing pattern. I don't know. I think that, and then again, that could irritate a lot of people, too. I don't know. It's cool how it is. I think Skyrim is one of the best game modes for all players, and only issue I would really have is the meta doesn't change that much. It's usually Porcelain, Porcelain, Porcelain. Like I said from day one, it would be pretty cool if they took Skyland Realm and one month just get rid of a few heroes. Don't even say any. Okay, no, you actually would have to say something. Like, take out poor Selena for one month or take out, you know, a faction for one month. That would literally change the meta. But then again, it would go against their business plan as well. So they would never do that. With that being said, let's focus on the gameplay. We're getting extremely close. You got that Devil's Lance right there, baby. And as you can see, I'm stacking all the Abyss artifacts currently because I want to have a better chance of pulling what I need. And by taking some off the market, you increase the odds of pulling the one you need. Okay. And right now, let's see. What strategy am I going for? Let's see. So I'm going for the Reincarnation strategy and Porcelain strategy. And that strategy is you put Eye of Destruction or Dragon Scale on Reincarnation, but you, it does require Natalie, though, and a, a very strong Porcelain, preferably Bone Sword. But the game plan is you want the enemy Porcelain to take out Reincarnation so she resurrects. Obviously, if there's souls on the battlefield, then we have a problem, you know? But like I said, this is one of many strategies I was trying out. And Porcelain takes out reincarnation and then we'll swap over to ruth Ca ruth cave or souls now souls with the book depending on your build can withstand a whole round of porcelain i tested it out I, i'm pretty sure it's this game i'm pretty sure it's this, this game right here and it, <laughs> i think it is i was like oh man dude souls is just crushing it yo hpy damage reduction rise however it all comes down to the de defensive runes you want as well and right now a lot of us have been trying out a whole bunch of guardian runes because you're getting that uh, the shields. So if you put on a high offense, high defense type here, ooh, there goes Natalie. Ooh, let's go, baby. Let's go, baby. Woo! Definitely got to get her. Too easy. And then you can maximize those shields. So you know the first five or six hits from Porcelina, enemy Porcelina, is going to just hit shields. However, that requires wilderness and the flag. Otherwise, it's absolutely pointless, right? So, right now, my strategy, as you can see, the more op more things I pull, just my strategy changes. And now I have Bone Sword. I'm going to slap that on Porcelina. There we go. Too easy. Boom. And then the last thing I'm really missing is Devil Wings for Valk. But I'm going to put the book on him. And you're going to see in one of the games, or the final game, that the book is money when it comes to souls. Because he increases his HP. His, just, you'll see. Okay, so now I'm looking for the devil wings. I'm like, yo, can I get the devil wings? Come on, baby. But I still think... Oh, there it goes. Boom. Let's go. Too easy. So for your front row, I highly, highly recommend, no matter what team you're building... You need to have Spirit Song Necklace up front. 
and I would probably shoot for the book as well, right? So having Curse Book up front and Spirit Song Necklace up front, I think is 100% key to surviving Porcelina on that front row. Now, when it comes to the third Abyss Artifact item, Dragon Scale does have block, but oh, there's just so many choices you could choose. What if you, yo, what if you went with Phoenix? What if you went with a, you can go with offensive or defensive Phoenix, but with Dragon Scale? Because she has the highest speed, especially when you have, you know, Devil's um, Wings and stuff. So she's obviously going to make a move, you know, first or second. Feed the energy into your back row, which should be either Natalie, probably Natalie, because poor, uh, you could choose Porcelain, because that would get her to, you know, maxed out. But you also could feed it into Natalie as well, to where she gets two ulti. She gets her own ulti, and then you get the demon ulti. I, see, th these are things I want to test out, but... It, it just takes the perfect build to test out, but this is the team I built. And, oh man. Now the question I have right here is like, do I feed the energy into Porcelain or do I put it into Natalie? Because the whole point of Natalie getting energy on round one is so you can get those sparks up from her ulti, from Natalie. Like I said, Natalie's a special hero to where it's... Natalie, the little girl, and then you have the demon. They're completely separate, you know? But you know they're together. Like, Dream could snatch Natalie from the battlefield, remove her from play for, what, two or three turns, and then, I think it's two turns. And then, yeah. But the demon will still activate, that's what I'm trying to say. Right, let's crush them real quick. Boom, too easy. And now it's time to go for that first place. I'm coming for you, Rambo! I'm coming for you, Rambo! <laughs> Here we go! Let's get it. Flame Demon is unleashed! Here we go, here we go, here we go. Turn one in the books. Let's get it. Uh, let's do it. I know John Rambo went against uh, the day prior, and he had a beautiful strategy. I tried like eight times. Eight, eight games and lost all eight games. And I think it's because he had Wilderness and the Flag. Dude, I just couldn't. My team was just getting waxed. Like, I was getting, the, you know, 40, 50 million damage, but of the stars. most of the damage, you know, wasted was on the dang shields. So, like I said, having Wilderness and, and Devil's Flag is such an amazing strategy. It, it's just, it just requires luck. And as you can see here, you know, you have Sophia targeting. He has, he's got the trio I was talking about earlier where it's Sophia, Porcelina, and Natalie. And as you can see, it does come close, but you'll see. And with all the actions my heroes are taking, when you have Devil's Lance, that just increases the attack of Natalie. I'm pretty sure I put Devil's Lance on her. I'm pretty sure. See how it's yeah, that attack up? Yeah, see? Too easy. <clears throat> Doo -doo -doo -doo. Now his, Sophia has a faster speed, but that's fine. The one mistake I did make was putting Valk in the front row. I should have put Souls, but, you know, we live and we learn, right? Good old Porcelina. And we still have to see this a million times. I can't wait for the Nightfall hero to get here. And starts whooping Porcelina's butt. <laughs> yeah, Spears on that clutch is clutch. But yeah, so. So this should. See, okay, you see the book kick in? Curse book kicked in on Souls. You got that 3 million HP. Now it's my Porcelina's turn. Yo, having the Void Oscillate, that, that's actually a great idea, man. Yo, shout out to John Rambo. I, I just thought, I don't want to, I didn't think of this. Yeah, I forgot she transforms and gets a, some, some HP back. So what if you have that plus a defensive artifact on her? And then, that means you'll have Spirit Song Necklace up front on Ruth Cave or whatever. You'll have another defensive hero with Cursed Book, Souls. So 
So here we go, round two, and then we have good old. Turning now watch this. This is this ashes. is one of, one of the strategies Charles and I thought of, <laughs> and it worked out perfectly. It's just I don't think it would work out if he had wilderness. I don't think it would work out at all if he had wilderness plus the flag. I, th I think all those shots would have got eights. And then last night I attempted to put on Devil's Lance on reincarnation, and yeah, that I completely got destroyed every single time. But it's all about, you know, having fun and trying to figure out the best strategies currently in the, that goes against the meta. We, we can all choose meta and all that stuff, but, you know, I know we like to look for other ideas that can compete against the meta. That's just what makes it fun, you know? It's not fun we just have one meta and everyone does it and no one, you know, tries anything else. Or there's, there's no other great strategies available to take advantage of, which that seems to be a hero clash dev issue with more issues coming in a few months <laughs> but hopefully y'all enjoyed the video hopefully you learned something hopefully you can get top 10 top 15 in good old skyland realm in your group of servers and i wish you the best of luck greatness manifesting